Hey, 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 guys, out to these fellas here, your voice manager. I unmute the voice of women who are ready to speak up about what has kept her silent for way too long. Super excited to be bringing you another episode of the Hashtag Speak Easy podcast, where we talk about the behind the scenes of being that successfully paid speaker and author. Guys, I know you saw the title. I know you said, oh, 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 I got to go and put this one in my save section. I know. I love you for doing so. Why? Because without the Speak Easy podcast listeners, there would be no Speak Easy podcast. So with that being said, make sure that you come and join the conversation, bit.ly forward slash world voice community, the free Facebook group. We want to hear from you and learn how this particular episode resonated with you. With that being said, let's dive into today's topic. Okay, so real talk. There's a lot more broke speakers out in the world than there are paid. I okay, I, I know that was kind of harsh. All right, listen, listen, listen. Right. I'm a, I'm a, I, I don't know any other way to like baby step you into it, especially with the big shift that we just had with with the coronavirus, and I don't know how to baby step you into it. But there's a lot more broke speakers than there are paid speakers. There's a lot of people that want to be paid speakers. Mm -hmm. But if so fact though, it's not happening. So let's talk about that. Let's be real. And I'm super excited about the guest that I have on today. He's kind of a big deal. Kind of, you know what I mean? Kind of got some things going on for him that can really definitely help you in your speaking journey and give you some of the like the secret sauce. You know, we like people that give secret sauce, right? Y'all, it, it may be because I'm a foodie. But we like people that got, you know, the extra sauce. They got the, you know, the brownie with the nuts, with the ice cream, those type of people. We like those. They're our friends. So this is one of our, one of my friends that I'm bringing to you. So with that being said, hey, AJ. What's going on? What it do? Man, another damn paradise. Like, literally. Because y'all up there, some of y'all in the cold. Like, I'm literally another damn paradise. But I, I digress. That's, that's how we're going to start off the show. <laughs> Dang. Okay. All right. Just throw everybody under the bus. With that being said, AJ, let the Speak Easy podcast listeners know a little bit about you, and then we'll dive into today's topic. So a little bit about me. The number one thing you need to know is that I have struggled tremendously um, and that I've made it. And because I made it, I know everybody else can make it. Um, I guess my the the thing that I, I like most about who I am is where I come from. So I always give shouts out to my mother, Patricia J. Perkin. Um, I start my bio off with that because um, that's to me that's my foundation. Nothing else exists without her. So and then other than that, I'm just I'm just an overall just normal dude, man. I just um, I do my thing. I teach people to do their thing, and and I want I was, I'm trying to get rid of this the uh the bs that's out there especially in the speaking world because there's so much bs man and we've been eating it up for so long and um yeah i'm just trying to get rid of it having whole double and trickered triple decker sandwiches of it at this point oh man but <laughs> with that being said i'm super excited because uh you and i actually got a chance to talk a little bit beforehand which sparked mm -hmm. this amazing uh conversation and when we think about the speaking industry and where it's going right now i think that you are in you are like the cornerstone for what speakers need next and that is they need the inside information from the event hosts yeah. themselves yeah. so with that being said talk about why that is a why that's so important especially now as we're making this big shift to you know what the events are going to actually start to look like so to me most of us have been being trained from people that were speakers right they 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 speak then they start selling us courses and we don't know nothing about them we don't really know if they good if, you know what i'm saying and even the ones that are good we don't realize that they don't even understand how they're getting booked now because now they're getting booked because they're pseudo celebrities. So then they're trying to teach people that have, you know, no name and, and no anything that are just trying to bring it to the speaking world. And it's, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to do it that way. 
Um, case in point, I seen a, a, I think she's a speaker trainer, I won't say her name, um, but she was like, yeah, I went from being a nobody to now I'm, I'm this and that. And I was like, how are you nobody? You work like next to Oprah. Like, and it wasn't Gail, you know, but it was somebody on our time. I'm like, you work next to Oprah and you got a presidential award from Obama. Like, you're not a nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so, so we get caught up with these stories that people be telling, like, come on, man. That, that's, not, that's not life for most of us. Most of us have never met a Barack Obama and got a presidential award from or awards on Oprah staff. So then it's like, how do we do it, right? How do we actually get into it? when we don't have that. And um, that's why I did create this, this mastermind group with event planners because event planners are the ones that taught me about the speaking work, right? I had already went to the courses, the big name courses and paid money. And, you know, I mean, it was, it was cool information, but it was like, that is not going to work for me, right? I don't have $15,000 to spend on a website. I don't, you know, I, I still have a job, so I can't just, I can't just work, work this whole speaking thing full time. Like, that's not how it's going to, you know, I'm, I haven't been in any movies. So how do you do it then? So I really just connected with event planners when I was in Atlanta and I worked for this company called Connect. And uh, we literally just recruited event planners all day. So I had a chance to build up a, a, a great network of event planners and they just started putting me on game of what it takes to become uh, a speaker in the industry and really get paid. So I was like, yo, I got to get this information out here because and people aren't doing it. It's interesting that you would say that because coming into the industry, we know that on this side of it, we know that there's a lot of hype. We know that there's a lot of um, things that they tell you, you need to sound this way, look this way, wear this, you know, take pictures like this. And you, you made a huge statement that we've talked about here on the show is, listen, some people come in and the first thing that you're being told is that you need a website and you need, ugh, they make me cringe, business cards. And <laughs> Yo, I hate when people, I hate when people are given this type of advice because, because this is the thing, man, we, and this is what we need to realize as speakers. When people are selling something, always look at what their end game is, right? Because they'll tell you, you need a website, you need to, they need to be able to follow you through this. Oh, and by the way, sign up for my ClickFunnels uh, um, affiliate thing. Like, come on, man, you were selling ClickFunnels. Like, you're a ClickFunnel affiliate. Like, you have, that's, that's your game, right? Like, you telling me to speak, but then it's something else on the back end that's, that you're trying to sell, man. So we got to... We got to be smart about knowing, like, all right, cool. What's your end game? Like, what's your target here for real? Because a lot of people, like you said, it's hype. It's hype to get us excited, but they know where their real money comes from is this. So then they want to lead you in that way. Or, you know what I'm saying? They want to put you on forever coaching, right? Yeah, that's that coaching where you never get off the wheel because you're never getting the results. Yeah, man, I, that's stupid to me. That's stupid to me. You just gonna drop the mic like that early in the episode, okay? Sorry, Sorry. okay. But it, but it's it's true. It's true and it's understandable. Um, a lot of people put out a lot. I'll, no, I'll I'll flip it. I'll go back and say, you know, something that I told my clients was that I made a commitment. We would not waste time, energy, and money. And because when I came into the industry, what did I do? I wasted time, energy, and money. No doubt. And, you know, I could have been further along. I could have been in other arenas and other places. And it wasn't until I stepped back and said, okay, let me come back at this authentically me, transparent, not all, all your, your, the greats and, and that you think is out here doing amazing things. They're not. And it at was because all. of that. It stood out. People were like, oh, I, I'm starting to peep game. I'm starting to see what you're saying is, there's some facts to that. Yo, I'm a, so so this is one thing and, and I'm not knocking no I'm not knocking nobody's hustle how you get it. Um but I, I I call a spade a spade, right? So no offense to any John Maxwell speakers out there that's been through his training that's a disciple that love him. I like John Maxwell. I think he's a great dude. Read a lot of his books, right? 
but don't you fool yourself to think there's one event planner on earth that's going to hire you because you have John Maxwell title behind your name. And I've asked them myself, so you can quote me on that. They don't look and say, oh, oh, you're a John Maxwell speaker. Oh, because they realize you don't get on stage at John Maxwell's comp, uh, his events. He only picks two or three people to get on stage. So where have you spoken at? You got a certificate saying that you're a John Maxwell speaker? Put that next to your doctor from AOL University. Exactly. Pause. Pause. Yes, I did say American Online University. Did you yes. just say your AOL Online yes. University? Yes, I did. Because that's, that's how much that John Maxwell certificate means when you're going for corporate gigs. Woo. And that, but, but see, that's the thing. <clears throat> and we talked about that a little bit too because a lot of times people come in and they... they they get into this hustle and bustle of, I got to pay for a slot, which <clears throat> making the investment to speak on stage is not a bad thing. Not a bad do thing at all. your research. Mm -hmm. Do your research. But they think, uh, you know, I'm going to get all this exposure and opportunity from paying to be on these, these stages, and they're not the right stages for you. Wasting time, energy, and money. Yeah. And it's it's kind of like this. This, mm, let me find the appropriate um, words to say. It's it's a carousel. Oh, I was about to say no. Nah, just be real. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's garbage. a carousel. So, and and this is the thing. It's no knock on the training, or I let me let me take that one because I'm very careful with that word training. It's nothing wrong with the education that you get from some of these places. But you have to understand there's a difference between education and training, okay? Most of these companies are trying to teach you how to swim in a classroom. They never put you in the water. And then they give you a certificate saying you're a lifeguard, but you've never been in the water. They give you a certificate saying that you're this swimmer, but you've never been in the water. They haven't put you in the water. So... It's not training, it's education, okay? We have to understand there's a difference, right? One of my mentors, and, and although it's kind of vulgar, it's really stuck with me. He said, yo, if you think that education and training are the same, ask yourself, do you want your 16-year-old daughter to go to sex education class or sex training class? Huge difference. Huge difference. And we have to start realizing, yo, this is what it is. This is the time we're, we're in. We have to understand what's going on in the industry. So if we want to get education, cool. But know that's what you're getting. But don't say you've been trained because you haven't. Okay, so let's talk about that training. Because I know for me, a lot of the training that I in, <laughs> endured, uh, didn't really factor in when you got on stage. Because let's be honest, even when you take a class, you can learn something in a class, but when you're in the midst of, you know, trying to reenact it, trying to act it out, it doesn't always go according to plan. So with that being said, Mr. AJ, have you had some moments where you stepped up and it didn't, it didn't work out the way that you thought it was going to work out? Man, I'd have had so many moments where that happened. And it's, it's just a part of the speaking world. Like, I, one of the reasons why I don't like PowerPoints is because something always happens, right? One of the reasons why I, I <laughs> people, people ask me all the time, like, hey, should I use a video intro? And I'm like, you can use it, but have, some, have something that, you know, if it goes wrong, you can do it. Yo, I'm getting up and had, um, I'm getting up and, and literally forgot what I was about to say. And I'm like, yo, how did I just, like, I do this? Like, what happened? Like, and, and, and this is the thing. So many things are going on when you're speaking, right? You're, as you're speaking, you're dealing with so many stimuli that's happening. You're looking at faces. You're trying to see if people are, the, one of the worst things I ever dealt with was somebody went to sleep while I was speaking. Yo, that, 
I couldn't even focus on everybody else because I'm focusing on this person's sleep. Yo, that is the worst. You don't, you like, yo, you, you, you just gonna sleep through my stuff, my man? Like, that's, that's what we're doing? We just, so we just came here to nap. Like, I'm not giving this, you know what I'm saying? I'm not giving out these, these nuggets of truth and you just, cool. I felt like Jay-Z, I'm trying to give you a million dollars again for nine ninety nine. You gonna sleep on me? That's, that's what we doing? Okay. And yo, it throws you off when people get up and go to the bathroom. Like, yo, you be like, did I say something wrong? Right? I mean, yo, it is, it's so many things that can happen. You got to watch what you say. You got to, yo, I, I, <laughs> I remember I was talking and I got asked a question about the garden of Eden. And I was like, yo, it's this big ass garden. And, and I didn't even realize I said ass. I was just kept talking and I, I yo, and everybody was like, oh. and I was like, what just happened? I'm like, I'm just talking about the Garden of Eden. And I didn't realize I said it was a big ass garden. Like, yo, <laughs> and I don't even curse when I speak. I don't curse on my videos. I don't know what happened that day. I just zoned out. And <laughs> yo, yo, I'm just, <laughs> yo, speaking. You got to be ready for this because <laughs> you'll forever be growing, man. Forever be growing. Well, is there a video of that? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's no oh, video of that one? Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Uh-uh. uh-uh. I'll get rid of that. Oh, man. That, that's epic. Oh, man. I remember speaking in church one day and the, the, the music was going so well. I tried to sing. Oh, man. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. And I started like three levels too hot because I was excited. Mm. Yeah, that's when you'd be like, dang, they brought me here to speak. Oh, yo, this whole this whole speaking session is going to be garbage. Cause, cause <laughs> it's I like, how do, you, how do you bounce back? Like, um, that's when you just you walk out the room and come back in as if you was never there. <laughs> yo, I, I, so little. You talk about feeling so little. Oh man, it, and, and yo, you got You have to learn how to. You have to learn how to not feed off the audience as much. Because I've been in an audience where they just look at you like you speak in Chinese, and you like, yo, like I'm, like yo, people pay me big money for the stuff that I'm giving y'all, and yeah, and yo, it's exactly. all type of things that come up. So you just got to be ready for it. And, and that's that's one of the reasons why I'm like, yo, you have to. You have to get on stage. You have to train. You have to do all of this stuff because, um, what, what they say, Murphy's Law. Whatever can happen, will happen. One hundred percent true in speaking. 100%. So now, with that being said, let's talk about the other piece of it. Is what happens in that moment where you know you're trying to build up this rapport so that way you could possibly be somebody who comes back and something happens and you're not asked. <laughs> so so this is the thing that I've realized look people understand that you're human okay the best thing that you can do is claim it I don't run from any mistakes anymore and one thing that helped me out with that a lot and I hate to use this but it really did was when I saw Beyonce fall down the steps on uh, one of her concerts and I was like yo if Beyonce can get back up from that and just keep singing I can mess up and keep going like hey it is what it is so I'll, I'll play with it. You know, if I mess up now, I'm just like, dang, I didn't mean to show y'all I was human. Well, now you know, <laughs> like, I'm human. Let's go, right? Let's keep it moving. Um, because people appreciate authenticity. I don't take myself too serious. I realize, uh, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I tell this to a lot of my coaching clients, man, um, the, one of the, the two professions that we admired the most in my neighborhood growing up were doctors and lawyers. And, you know, doctors practice medicine, lawyers practice law. Why can't I practice speaking? That's how I look at it. So I will continuously and always get better, but I'm always practicing. So I never take myself serious. I, you know, I'm a practice and I'm going to keep practicing. And now I'm to a point to where, you know, I'm, I get pay a nice amount to come speak now um, per gig. Uh, so, 
you know, the practice pays off. It's just that I realized I'll forever be in practice mode. Mm, I love that. I love that. Now, with saying that, because I want Speak Easy podcast listeners, you guys know and understand, I'm always telling you, you should always be in um, in a space where you want to continue to learn. You want to continue mm-hmm. to grow. Because guess what? Les Brown didn't start at where he's at. He started mm-hmm. way back when. Uh, but there's some key elements that really st- stood out in the process. And so, AJ, what's one of the key things as you've been getting better and better? I hope you've been getting better and better. As wow. you've been getting better and better, what are you? What would you say is one of those things that really you can attribute you getting better to? I mean, we talk about, you know, practice. We talk about education as far as speakers. What did that look like for you? I studied the grades. I studied the grades. So you just mentioned Les Brown, right? If you want something bad enough to go out and fight for, to work day and night for, to lose time, sleep, and peace for, if all you dream and scheme is about it and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it and lose all terror of the opposition for like I study these dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a game. Like, this is my craft. Just like Kobe studied Michael Jordan and he knew all his moves, I study these dudes. I look at how they are on stage. I break down what they do. I break. That's how I was able to come up. How, how I was able to come up with my fluid speech that I could take anywhere. Because I'm like, yo, I'm studying them. I'm looking at them. I'm watching your speeches. I'm looking at when you mess up, when you have a floating and slip. How do you deal with it, right? Most of us say we want to be speakers, but we don't want to study the grades. Like if you don't want to study, if you don't want to study your craft, you don't want this craft. Every morning I'm studying somebody, even to this day. So that that's how I started making that transition was because I'm watching male, female. I look at Lisa Nichols, phenomenal. I look at, yo, and I even look at speakers that bomb. Yo, I'm studying, but I'm always studying, right? Like, that's what it is. We have to know if, if, this, if we say this is our industry and this is what we want, then, yo, you have to study the grades. You can't, you can't name an NBA player that can't tell you who they studied growing up. Right? That's part of the game. If you love it that much, you're going to study it. You're going to watch it. You're going to hold, you're going to grasp it. You're going to hold on to it. You're going to look at all the little nuances now. Right? You're going to look at how they open, how they close, how they interact with the audience. And, and all of that makes you great, right? There's a book I love called Still Like an Artist. And he says, if you take from one person, it's called plagiarism. But if you take from 100, you're called a genius. So I'm, I'm entering my genius phase because I'm taking for everybody. If you do something right now that I like, I'm taking it. And I'm making it mine. Put a stamp on it. What? I might give you credit twice and then it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're going to give credit twice, I guess. No, <laughs> I definitely have to agree with you there. It's it's interesting because when we think about the speaking and, and the author industries, a, a lot of us, you know, thought that, oh, this is all new. This is, this is all, but the things that are going on are not new. It's a different, no. it may be a different arena. It may be a different vantage point, but it's not necessarily new. And when we understand that, we won't get, you know, so caught up in the the razzle dazzle and the sparkle and you know everything that they're putting out in front of us because it's okay. I've listen, been around the world and yeah, I, I, I swear, listen. I swear, <laughs> like, yo, I, I love it when people be like, "Oh, I have this new thing." I'm like, bro, ain't nothing new under the sun, man. Like, especially that, that's like saying you you have a new antique. Like, how are you going to have a new antique? It can't be an antique. Like, yo, the speaking game is not new. The speaking game has been around for the longest time. The, the, before people just spoke to get into power, right? That's why most of your, like, I'm going to tell you, and I say this all the time, and it's very controversial, but one of the most powerful and dynamic speakers in the world ever was Adolf Hitler. Like, this dude made people hate other people just by telling them stuff. Right. He knew how to use his words. That's what speakers were back in the day. They were people that could that were great orators that moved people to move in whatever way they wanted them to. Now we just move people for money. Right. We move people in different ways. Right. 
So we have, unfortunately, we have what pulpit pimps and all of this, these other titles that, and I'm a preacher's kid, so yeah, I can attack, I'll attack the church all day when I see it, right? Because um, I love the church, but we all know it's nonsense to be going on in there sometimes. Too. So, you know, it, the, the speaking game has been around for a long time. Now we're just getting different avenues to expect. That's it. That's all it is to it. So. Okay. So we know a little bit about the AJ now. Mm -hmm. But little AJ, did little AJ want to be a speaker? Could little AJ speak? Little AJ could actually sing. Little like, AJ could sing. Little AJ could sing for real, for real. Like, I mean, for real. Like, had me all over singing and was being recognized for it. And then puberty hit. And something happened to little AJ's voice. And he stopped sounding like Usher and started sounding like this right now. So that went away. So... <laughs> Yeah, so no, little AJ did not want to speak. I didn't, I wasn't too fond of uh, the the Easter speeches and all of that. Um, yeah, and then, you know, I got tired of everybody saying I was going to be a pastor because I knew I wasn't, I knew that wasn't in my cards. Uh, so yeah, little AJ didn't want to speak at all. I just, I wanted, I wanted to play the drums because the drummer was a cool dude. You know the drummer is a cool dude growing up. Like, come on now. Most times, most times. Okay, exactly. I have to agree. Yeah. Exactly. So I wanted to be the drummer, right? The the piano player was weak. The bass guitar player was lazy. Boom, boom, ba doom, boom, ba doom. You know, we ain't had one of them exciting bass guitars like boom, boom, boom. boom. No, nah, we had a we had a kind of a lazy bass guitar player. So the drummer was the cool dude. In my eyes, I was like, yo, I want to be that guy. So that's what that's what little AJ was on right there. Yeah. Okay, all right. And so if you had a moment to go back and say, let's say your college years, if you had a moment to go back and say, you know, something to get you to where you are right now, if you had something to say to get you here faster, what would it be? Going back and talking to the college AJ. Said the little okay. AJ wanted to be a drummer, so Okay. Well, I mean, and a football player, right? I wanted, I wanted to be, I popular, wanted to be, I wanted yeah. To be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to be, I wanted to go to the NFL. If I could go back to my college year, my first day as a freshman, I'll walk up to myself and say, look, buddy, you're not good enough for the NFL. So develop other skills because that dream you have is going to be set on fire in four years. Okay. They're going to light it on fire right in front of your face. And you're even going to have the ability to run for NFL scouts. And they're going to tell you to keep running. Don't stop because you have no place in this league. So all this time and energy that you're committing to college football, I wish you would commit it somewhere else because um, we're not going to let you lie like everyone else and say you didn't make it because your coach didn't like you. You got hurt. No, you weren't good enough. Okay. You are not good enough. And that's the case. All right. Some people are supposed to make it to the league. You're not. But there's other great things for you. So let's focus on those. That's what I was say. Oof, that's an ouch. Mm. Especially getting to that college moment because you're like. You'd be like, yo, I'm almost here. You'd be I'm almost it. there. That's, oh, that's the feeling. Like you, You're like, I'm almost there. Oh, I'm almost. And then the NFL be showing you. I remember when I was my junior year in school because I went D1. And I remember the Green Bay, uh, the Green Bay Packers had this uh, running back that did not start in college, but he made it to the league. And I was like, wow, that could be my story. Because clearly I'm not starting right now. I do play, but I'm not starting. But maybe they're overlooking, me, right? And then I found out, no, you're overlooking because you're not that talented. Like, you have a lot of heart, kid. Yo, when it comes to heart, you got one of the biggest. When it comes to athletic ability, yeah, you know, God gave you a lot of abilities. That wasn't one of them. So, you know, don't, don't, don't waste too much time there. You made a great statement. Are you overlooking you? Hit on yeah. that a little bit more. 
Yeah. So a lot of times when we do things just because we like it, we don't like to tell ourselves the truth. Right. So there was a couple things that I had going against me. Number one, I wasn't that fast and I wasn't that strong and I didn't love it enough to keep getting concussions. Right. And, and, and more than being fast and strong, let's talk about the love. Right. Because I love what football brought me, but I didn't love the process to get. Okay. Like I loved the accolades from football. I loved how girls would look at me because I played football. I love being in the newspaper because of football. I love hearing my name over the loudspeaker, AJ Vassar on the tackle. I loved hearing that. What I didn't love was going through all the practice was losing sleep so I can do it, was doing all the things that it takes to be a football player. And because I didn't love it, I didn't do them. And that's why, I mean, number one, I still don't think I was good enough, like, we're going to be honest. But I could have been a lot better had I loved it, and I loved the process. And that's why I knew I was, I was going to be cool at being a speaker because I love the process. I love everything about this. Like, I will lose sleep listening to a speaker. I will wake up early. Like, I do this. This is my thing. Like, I love, I love the speaking industry, right? And, and, and the thing, what I like, love about passion, the word passion, passion is something that you love and hate, right? So I love speaking. I love getting ready for it. I love all of that. I also hate all of the garbage that's out there. I also hate how some people do our industry and take advantage of people because they know only 3% of the people will ever finish online courses. That's not even being successful. That's just completing the online course. So I hate that part. So it's a, I have a passion for this, man. It's a love and a hate. But this is what I do all day. So, okay, so let's talk about the transition. Uh, because that's a heck of a transition to go from a goal of being in the NFL to uh, not even just speaking on stages, but doing your own mastermind event. Mm -hmm. What did that shift feel like and what did it look like? Okay, so so let's go back to one thing. I didn't have a goal to be in the NFL. I had a wish. I, okay, it's, to, it's, totally, it's totally different. A, a wish can be a goal. It can okay. be a goal. <laughs> yeah, mine was more like, like, it's just blowing in the wind. Okay, so that's number one. Uh, the, the transition to, <laughs> I'm sorry. You got to pray for me, man. Pray for me. I, just, I don't even know how to be me. Uh, that's, you know. But the, the transition was interesting because it didn't happen immediately. It, it happened slowly uh, over time. I started off being a, uh, after college, I was a professional barber and I opened up a barbershop and a beauty salon and I started mentoring kids. And I realized I really like helping people. I'm like, this is my thing. I love helping people. I love seeing people get aha moments. And during that time, the thing that everyone always talked about was how much I read because I was always reading books. And I started thinking like, yo, I could, I could really help people out uh, because I have a different perspective. I have some different, you know, um, just outlooks on life that I'm not seeing out there, right? Based on my program and where I come from, the elements I grew in, I can really help people. And then I was asked to speak at a, uh, a youth group. And, and I did it because I had so many kids saying like, AJ, we wish, we wish we had your life and you don't know how hard it is and you got it easy. And, and they're saying that because they, they see the motorcycle and, you know, I had a brand new motorcycle. I had, I had a dope boy car because I, you know, growing up, that's why I admired. I admired dope boys. I just didn't want to sell drugs. So I had the car on 23, rim, 23 inch rims and, you know, I'm doing all of that. I got the barbershop, making money, all that good stuff. So once I started hearing that, I was like, yo, I'm not being honest with them on what it takes. And um, I don't tell this story much. So this is, this is one I'm going I'm to give to your audience. Um, I, when I went and spoke at the youth event, 
I was like, yo, you, you you're, you're, you're painting a false narrative of you're doing basically the things that you don't want other people to do, right? You showing them all the good, but they have no idea to struggle. And so when I went and spoke, I actually, when I started, I told them everything I'd accomplished in life. I mean, I sounded like a real jerk because I was like, yeah, I was homecoming king and I was this and I was that and I college and I did this and I got my barbershop and blah, blah, blah. And then I said, I said, but I have a friend whose story is a little different. I said, um, at the age of five, my friend was molested. And at the age of seven, he was sexually assaulted. And at 11, he started, you know, getting abused by his stepfather, um, physically abused and, and cussed out and mentally abused and um, started wanting to commit suicide. And I just painted this just story of like the things that, that they didn't know. And I asked them at the end, I said, would y'all like to meet my friend? And of course they were like, yeah, like, who is this dude? And I, uh, you know, I pointed to the back of the, of the room. And everybody turned and uh, it was nobody there. So when they started turning back around, I was pointing to myself. And I was like, yo, I am my friend. And um, it was my way of letting them know, like, man, you never know. You never know nobody's whole story. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's easy to look at where they are now and think that um, this couldn't have happened to them. You see a, a six foot three, 250 pound person and you like, nobody's ever messed with him, but you don't see the little kid that that couldn't protect himself. You don't see the little kid that was vulnerable. You know, you don't, you, you, it's hard to see through the bravado that everybody creates because that's how we protect ourselves now, you know. Um, actually, that following week, there was a, a, a girl, a 12 year old girl in the audience that turned her stepfather in because they had been molesting her for over a year. And uh, that when I seen her, again, she gave me a hug. And that changed my life because I realized like I I could actually change people's lives with my voice. And that's how, that's how that whole process started, man. Learning that you can change people's lives with your voice. That that feeling is like nothing else. You know how they talk about how super that all superheroes don't wear capes. Yeah. That's one of those moments. It is. It is. And I'm, I'm telling you, I don't care how much I ever get paid to speak. I will never experience that feeling again. If somebody wants to challenge that and pay me a million dollars to speak, I'm up for it. I'm willing to do that. And I mean, we can put it to the test. Right. But I, I'm telling you that that feeling right there, even when I talk about it now, like I, I get to just thinking like, yo, like I never thought my story, my voice my message would like change the trajectory of somebody's life. And, uh, you know, that's why I do what I do. Like, cause I realize that number one, I can change people's lives. And number two, there are so many of us out there. Like I can only touch a, a finite amount of people, right? Even, even the biggest names that we think of your Tony Robbins, your Grant Cardone's, your John Maxwell's, most people have never heard of them. They have no idea who they are, right? So it's up to us to collectively put our voices together and just start touching the world. And, you know, that's how we change people's lives. So that's why I, I work with speakers now. I teach pe speakers how to become professional so that they can truly get out there and take their message and, you know, change, change others' lives because that's what it's all about now. Okay, I had to <clears throat> pull it in, pull it in, pull it back. <laughs> I had to pull it back together. Uh, simply because it's it's about impact. And I think that's that's something that we don't talk about enough when it comes to those who are coming into the industry is what is the impact that you're trying to leave, you know, on the world. Or I used to tell people, each of us has a thumbprint. And my thumbprint is going to be completely different than yours, probably because my hands are a lot smaller, but my thumbprint is going to be completely different than yours. Yeah. What's the thumbprint that you're leaving on people, you know, as you come in and leave out of their presence? And What's my, yeah, yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question for everybody. Are, are you asking me what's my thumbprint? 
Yeah. Oh, we going deep. Let's go. Oh, man. So my thumbprint is, um, <laughs> I actually got it from um, one of my mentors. I asked him, I asked him for something. He was a multimillionaire. He's the first dude I ever knew that owned a Rolls Royce. And I asked him for something. And he said, uh, AJ, are you using me? And I was like, Ugh. I was like, yeah, I guess so. And he was like, good. He said, don't have anybody in your life that's not useful. And my thumbprint is to be used by as many people as possible and to have as many people as possible stand on my shoulders and be better than me. Um, that's what I want. I, I, I want people to be better than me. I want people to make more money than me. I want people to do things that I, I haven't even dreamed of yet because of me, right? Um, Jay-Z has a line that I love. He says, if my click is rich, my click is rugged. We'll never fall because we'll always be each other's crushes. And that's my thing. It's like, yo, I want to raise people up and show them what's possible, right? And show them that like, yo, you look at me, I'm, I'm like, I'm not even half of what you can do. Now you can do so much better than me because now I'm teasing you all the mistakes I made. And, and that's, my, that's my thing is just to see people excel over me. I love that. I love that. This episode could go on because I, I know the value that's being delivered in this particular episode and what it's going to mean for those who listen in. But the biggest thing that I want speakeasy listeners you to take away from this is that no matter where you are, what you've been through, there is something greater. I know a lot of times we get stuck on the visual mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of hard to keep dreaming. It's kind of hard to look at the vision board, especially with everything that's going on right now. It's kind of hard to think about where it is that we could go next. But the reality is, is that there are more opportunities out there um, that we just don't know about. And so making connections is going to be valuable for you. So with that being said, AJ, let them know how they can reach out to you and where they can find you at online. Um, you can reach out to me at AJ Vassa. All my, all my social media joints is AJ Vassa, uh, AJ V as in Victor, A S S A R. Um, Holla at me. I would love to be a resource. Uh, one of the things that I offer people is if you want to be a speaker, like connect with me, I'll show you how to find 50 speaking engagements, uh, 50 speaking gigs within a hundred miles of your house. Like they're all around. You just don't know where to look. Um, and I, I want to piggyback off what you just said about them changing. Like, yo, change happens so fast. Like I was, I went through a time of sleeping in my car in 2014 and within four years I had left the U S and moved down to Medellin, Colombia, where I currently live at now, you know? So it's like that fast, it changed like from being in my car to being in a whole nother country living. And, you know, it always seems like it's going to take forever when we're looking straight ahead. But then we don't think about how, when we go to high school, we're a freshman, then we're graduating. And it's that fast. It's like, yo, you, it's like, yo, I felt like I was a freshman yesterday and now I'm, I'm, I'm graduating. And that's how life is. So uh, you're totally right. I encourage everybody, man, whatever your dream is, go after, um, connect with me, connect with somebody, like make sure that somebody's helping you get towards your dreams, right? Whoever that is. I don't care if it's me or somebody else. Just do what you got to do because it's, uh, we all here for each other. That's it. I love it. Guys, you know, I love bringing guests on that can help you move forward. That's what we're all about. We're all about movement and taking action. So with that being said, make sure that you connect with AJ. Make sure that you search him out so that you can see what he has going on. And not just that, we didn't even talk about the book. So we may have to have him come back on, maybe, to talk about, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> talk about some books that he has out already and possibly one that's on the... Uh, I finished it yesterday. I finished okay. it yesterday. I sent it to my editor yesterday. <laughs> so so you guys uh, will see and hear from him even more. With that being said, I appreciate you because guess what? Without the Speakeasy podcast listeners, there is no Speakeasy podcast. I am your host, Savise Pelzer, the voice coach, your voice manager. And with that being said, I appreciate you guys. Until next time, don't forget to press it out. See ya.